What exactly happens when you take a CPU and you boil it? What exactly happens when you boil RAM? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out exactly what happens to computer hardware when you put it in boiling water. But first, today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Yubico. Yubico makes high quality USB key that you can plug into all your devices. Secure all your different accounts like Google, Dropbox, Microsoft, etc. using this little device. Right here I have the 5CI and I can just plug this into my phone to access all the keys that are for all my different accounts. The small form factor makes it relatively easy to just store in my keys. Learn more about the Yubico 5CI and other Yubico products at the end of today's video. So first up, it's kind of important that I at least go through and pick out the parts that we're going to use for today. Um, I've got some CPUs and um, basically we're going to try a few different uh, stuff. Some RAM modules here um, and I don't know, throw in an SSD while we're at it. So there we go, we've got an SSD, CPU, and RAM. Last time, water ruined the hard drive. We can assume logically that if we boil it, it's not going to be fun or interesting to watch. Um, all of these parts survived. Well, actually, we haven't tried an SSD before. I just found this. Oh, let's just throw a couple other things in here. Um, let's take a wireless adapter, one of those things that you know you put into your computer to get wireless Wi-Fi. Um, real quick though, I'm not putting a power supply in there, obviously because you don't want to take a power supply and put that in water. Uh, that would not be a smart idea because power supplies contain voltage, which is mains voltage, and you would... <gasps> it just creates a stupid situation. I'm not saying this channel is a stupid situation but it creates a stupid situation. So here's the premise for today's video. We know that you can shower with your CPU. That's a previous video. Uh, would you want to do that in reality? Questionable, but it's, it's, it's definitely doable. It can get wet. Um, we also know that CPUs go up to a temperature of, well, depending on the CPU, anywhere from 87 up to like 95 degrees. This one I have seen get up to 100 degrees before. Water boils at 200 degrees Celsius. I'm stupid. 100 degrees Celsius, I've been 3D printing a little too much. 200 is a filament, that's what, that's what you do with filament. And it still works. So that means that if assuming we can get it to not touch any of the side, like float on top, then the only water should be touching this. And since boiling substances don't actually get hotter than their boiling point, this should, in theory, not get above 100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the heat should not get it and the water shouldn't get it. But that means that who knows? It, the heat could make things expand and then water can get in there and then we can't get it out and then we ruin the CPU. So it looks like we're going on a field trip because nothing in my house. I feel comfortable uh, dissolving, I don't think we use leaded solder, but potentially hazardous to eat substances in a pot of water. So we're going on a field trip to Goodwill to grab a new, uh, grab a pot to boil some water in. Hopefully this is like a pot I can do other stuff in, like put thermal paste in or... So I have pot, not a pot, this is a pan, but you know what? It is good enough. Water in the, the in, in the pan, put some water in there, put the CPU in there, and um, let it boil for a bit, and see if boiling water ruins CPUs. So this is not something that you um, normally see here. We've got pot, wait for it to get to a nice boil, and then uh, we'll put some, put some stuff in it, put some CPUs in it. So it's kind of up to a boil now. Um, we've got 
Two very interesting tools. We've got a hammer to stir with. Of course, you don't stir with anything other than a hammer. I say that's up to a pretty solid boil. We got pliers to drop it in. Let's drop in the CPU. There goes our CPU. Interesting already how there's bubbles coming out of the uh, top of the CPU here. Totally what you're supposed to use a. Totally, totally very interesting picture right there. Some RAM. Add our, this time our SSD. The Wi Fi chip. Uh, we'll let those boil for a bit. I think our parts are ready to go. They should be soup. I don't know, this is like the most interesting thing I've posted in a while, because this looks like such a cursed image. Okay, well that posts, um, let's go through and get these out. Not a very practical tool, but not what this was intended for, but okay. You guys have a fascination with the hammer. Well, I guess the next logical thing is to wait a bit while this dries. Honestly, it looks like it cleaned it super well. So before we put anything into the computer, I'm gonna take some guesses on what's actually gonna happen. I think RAM, going to work just fine. SSD, going to work just fine. Wi-Fi adapter, work just fine. CPU, on the other hand, not so much because I noticed that there was a lot of bubbles coming out of this little hole in the corner. There's some air in between the silicon die, heat spreader, at least on the sides, not where it makes direct contact. So if I were to guess right now, that's completely filled with water. And since now that it's cooled off, all that water is probably still in there. So it's probably not going to work. Now in the past though, it hasn't worked. And then when I put it, like leave it for a month and I come back to it, it actually works just fine. So we will definitely have to see. So without further ado, let me put this into some computers. Now, I don't necessarily have a direct system or like a desktop that I can put this in. So I'm gonna take my old laptop from uh, school and uh, put this in there. Cause I think this is what, DDR3? Let's see what we got, shall we? It's been a while since I booted this up. This does not have a hard drive. This has kind of not been touched in a bit too. So what do we got? We got, ooh. Um, well, we got some bad news. Uh, installed memory is eight gigabytes, which, so originally there was 16 gigabytes, but if you guys remember that little stick that I fried was four gigabytes. So there was two eight gig sticks in here. I removed one, so there should be eight without adding the stick in there and then putting the fried stick in there we get only eight which we should have 12 gigabytes worth so uh frying your ram or boiling your ram however you like to say it is not a uh viable method i don't even know what you do it for why would you fry your ram but you know answering questions you didn't know you had you should subscribe right now we're only one down um, I should check the Wi-Fi adapter too while we're at it. This video is not sponsored by Lenovo. Though Lenovo, come contact me if you want to sponsor me. That'd be, that'd be nice. This video is, however, sponsored by uh, Ubico. So you better uh, check out the YubiKey. Okay, so the question is, we've put the SSD in here. And we're going to put in the internet adapter now. Okay, so when we... Oh boy, I didn't turn it off. Well, that'd probably be smart. Turn it off and turn it back on again. So then we can get the refresh. So we should have a bootable device. I think this is a Chromebook SSD, so it might boot into Chrome, probably not. And then also it should be a, um, yeah, we should have the wireless adapter and then we'll do the CPU. This is why this video had to be sponsored because likely this may or may not work and all these parts were kind of expensive. So. To answer questions you didn't know you had, which I gotta put my password in here. Oh, I bet it's gone in a boot loop because of the, ah, it's stuck in a boot loop. It looks like the, um, I don't know which one it is. If I take a guess, take out the SSD first. 
We'll see if that's fixed in the boot loop. It froze on me. So, uh, so likely RAM, SSD, and Wi-Fi card. No bueno. So point of the story. Don't fry anything of your computers. I mean, I don't even think putting it in rice would help. Broken. Borken. Super broken. Now, for the last part of this video, you guys should hedge your bets. Do you think the CPU is going to come in clutch? I don't. Well, we could be wrong. Let's find out. Totally how you're supposed to do this, guys. Question of the day is, is it going to boot? This is called lazy. We'll see what actually shows up because it looks like it might have actually progressed farther than I thought. Let's use that new fancy tool from um, wish.com to take the HDMI output and feed it directly into my, mo in my laptop. Actually, the only thing from Wish I might actually use for $9. Thanks, Wish. Nothing. Yeah, it's frozen now, too. This is warm, so... Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what did we learn today? Uh, one, we have a very high success rate at ruining your components. Um, if you fry them literally versus frying them figuratively, it, it ends up with the same result. If you ever wanted to know what happens when you boil a CPU, you know, boil PC parts, all that stuff, um, the answer is exactly to the T what you would expect would happen. Worst case scenario. Actually, I think, it, I think of a couple worst case scenarios, but so really you're not going to get much out of this. This is a, definitely a joke video. Thank you for Ubico for sponsoring today's video so that we can have the margins in order to do this stupid stuff for your entertainment. Make sure you support them and check out what they have to say at the end of today's video. And uh, make sure you subscribe as well. Today's sponsor is Ubico and they manufacture USB keys that you can use to generate your two-factor authentication codes for all your different accounts. The Ubico 5CI has two different sides. It has a USB-C and it has a lightning port, meaning that I can connect it to both my phone and my laptop or desktop whenever I need it. Now, why would you want to purchase one of these devices? Well, if you went through and you had your phone as a authentication method for your, for example, Google account, and someone was able to steal your identity and basically get your phone number transferred to their phone, it would make it very easy for them to access accounts by having your phone number. So what this does is it makes it so it's a physical key that you have to physically plug into the device in order to access your accounts, making it a lot more secure. As always, make sure you have your emergency keys written down and another authentication method in case you lose this key. Learn more about Ubico and their assortment of different keys down in the description. Use the code J10 to get $10 off a Ubico purchase.